And good Sunday evening. It's time for a few more Sunday night thoughts. And it is a rainy Sunday night. Hope you are in, staying dry. Hope you are well. I hope you've enjoyed this study. We have been studying a passion uh, for God for quite some time now. We've been looking at this for uh, a few weeks. And as we have talked about passion, we have been looking at seven ways actually to kill your passion. You know, we want to be passionate about God. We know we are to be passionate about God. And so there are some things that hinder us in that. There are some things that get in the way. There are some passion killers, if you will, uh, that if we're not careful, we can allow these things to uh, leave us or put us into a, a slump for in our relationship with God. And so we've talked about revival, we've, we've talk, we're talking about our passion, we're talking about all these things that are so much needed, again, because of what we have just come out of last year, what we are uh, now uh, going into our third month starting tomorrow, which is hard to believe, of t- uh, 2021, uh, this new year. I-, I hope that it is a year of revival for all of us, a revival for us individually, a revival for us as the church, uh, that we are on fire and passionate because of, of all that we have, have missed. So. We have looked at these things that can that can hinder or kill our passion. Now, uh, as we go back for just a minute, I want you to think. The creative force behind all great art, all great drama, all great music, all great architecture, all great writing, and on and on and on you can go. The, the, the creative force behind that is passion. Nothing great is ever accomplished in life without passion. Nothing great is ever sustained in life without passion. Because as we have been saying over and over again, uh, passion is what energizes your life. It, it, it makes the impossible possible. It gives you reason to get up in the morning and say, uh, you know what, I'm going to do something great with my life today. And hopefully you're saying, I want to do something great for the Lord today with my life and, and allow Him to do that. Uh, because without passion, life becomes monotonous, it becomes boring, it becomes routine, uh, it becomes dull. Uh, passion is is absolutely uh, essential. And, you know, as we've said, purpose is the reason you journey. We have a purpose in God. We have a purpose through Jesus Christ. But passion is the fire that lights our way. You know, when we look at what God has done for us, what Jesus has done for us, we certainly should be passionate in every way uh, You know, because God created us with the emotions to have passion in our life, and He wants us to live that passionate life. Of course, He wants us to live that passionate life uh, for Him. And and that's certainly, I I guess, the point of all these lessons and all this that I want us to to truly understand, uh, that if that's not our life, it needs to be. And we need to figure out, if there are things that are hindering us, then we need to get those things out of our life. We, we need to, uh, you know, be of the mindset, as we read in Colossians 2, uh, or 3 and verse 23, where we're told by inspiration, whatever you do, uh, do it with all of your heart as unto the Lord and not unto men. That, that, that is talking about passion, being passionate in, in our relationship with God. Uh, he wants... Uh, us to do everything passionately when it comes to loving Him and serving Him and living for Him. And so we've got to be careful not to allow um, certain things to get in the way of, of that passion. Now, you know, the, the other thing we talked to, have talked about is, you know, they, we are passionate about a lot of things. We're specifically in these lessons talking about our passion for God. But you can think, even maybe in times when we're just we're not feeling great we're down we're, we're there you know things are are uh not going great uh we are still passionate about some of our favorite things our sports and our recreation and a lot of different things uh, but when it comes to our passion for god we start we start coming up with all kind of excuses why we we can't uh you know why why it's 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 too hard why uh but our passion for God is the most important. That, that's what we have to understand. Romans 12, 12, 11 says, Never be lacking in zeal. Never be lacking in zeal. But keep your spiritual fervor. Don't let things cause you to, to go into that slump. Don't let things uh, cause your fire for the Lord to dim. Don't let things blow it out. You know, Don't let Satan blow it out. Don't do it. Keep the fires going in your life spiritually. And when it says, you know, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, that gives us indication that it's not automatic. 
You know, just because we become a Christian, it's not automatic that we're going to be on fire for the Lord. It's a choice. It's a discipline. It's something that you must maintain. And you so, so you're continually working at this and continually want to grow closer to God. And uh, you're, you're going to allow your passion for Him to uh, continue. But if we're not careful, there's some things that can get in the way. Some of the things that we've talked about in these seven passion killers, we talked about uh, an unbalanced schedule. We talked about how we can allow our lives to get unbalanced, uh, where we work all the time and neglect God, or where uh, maybe even uh, you know we, we don't take time for ourselves and we don't take time for God. So there's uh, a, a certainly a real possibility of uh, allowing that to hinder us and to kill our passion. We talked about an unused talent. Uh, you know, we don't, we're not to sit on our talents. We're not to, uh, you know, God has given all of us some kind of ability or talent, and we're to use it for His glory, use it for Him. Uh, we talked about that unconfessed sin. Oh, wow, that you know, this is a big one. A few things rob us of joy, uh, rob us of confidence, rob us of passion more quickly than than guilt does. And so, you know, we cannot allow unconfessed sin uh, to hinder our passion for God. We've got to confess that. Uh, we talked about an unresolved conflict. You know, if we have... Um, something against another. Con- conflict just drains the passion right out of you. Uh, you know, it's it's easy for that to happen. If you have a conflict uh, between you and your spouse, if something has happened in, in your life and, and you allow that to fester, you obsess about that, man, it can, it can just take the passion in your life right out. Or maybe a conflict at work or conflict with a friend. You know, there's a lot of different things you can look at. But conflict is, is something that certainly can rob our joy. It can certainly cause us to, to lose passion. Uh, we talked about an unsupported lifestyle. You know, if it's if it's not a life that is um, uh, as it should be, you know, human beings were made for relationships. We're made uh, to live that way. We need each other. Uh, we all fall some, sometimes. We all stumble at times. So we all need people uh, to help us up um, in our lives. And so if we're neglecting those relationships, if we're neglecting our church family, then that certainly can... Uh, kill our passion. And then last week we talked about an unclear purpose or vision. If you just don't know, you know, when you forget the purpose of your uh, life, that is, uh, that's a sure way to kill your passion for uh, life and for God. If you don't know what your pur- purpose is, then why bother? Why get up? Life without purpose is activity without direction. It's motion without meaning. Life without purpose is trivial. It's petty. It's pointless. Uh, it's It's easy to forget why we're here on earth. We're here for God. We're here to serve Him. God has uh, blessed us in every way, and so therefore, well, we need to make sure that we're giving our life uh, to Him and making sure that we have that uh, clear vision and purpose of our life in Christ, what what our life is all about. It's no longer about me. It's about God's will for my life. It's what I want to do to please Him and nobody else. Well, we come tonight to the last one that we want to look at, and again, as we keep all these in mind, these are hopefully, Lord willing, will help us to avoid these things and be passionate for God in every way, and certainly that's that's what I want to do, and that's what these are things that I'm working on as well. But this one, this uh, last one that we're going to talk about is an undernourished spirit. This will kill your passion. You know, every day, You face all kinds of circumstances, and these circumstances conspire to shrink your spirit. They are are conspired, uh, conspiring to shrivel your heart. Uh, If you if you think about it, you know you're going to get up in the morning, Lord willing. You you'll get up in the morning, um, and you're going to have distractions. Uh, You're going to have some disappointments. Uh, You're going to have some conflicts, or you're going to have some changes, and and you're going to have some challenges. Uh, You're going to to have problems and you're going to have pressures you're going to have frustrations and fears and failures and fatigue and and you, you're saying right now hope we want you to be a little more positive <laughs> I'm just I'm just being real you know we're going to have these uh, challenges and difficulties and we're gonna we're gonna face all of these things but all of these things fall in on you and and they just shrivel your heart they shrink your your spirit so you must intentionally nourish your spirit here's where the positive comes in while we have all of those things, uh, as life brings us these things, as we face all these things, some that we bring on ourselves, but uh, as we just face life, we're going to have all of these things. But if we allow them all to just set on top of us and, and, and crush us and shrivel our hearts and, and, and just push us down, and we're not intentionally striving to nourish our spirit and to grow, you, you know, 
if you don't do it, if you don't nourish your spirit, nobody else is going to do it for you. That's that's what we have to understand. So if you don't take the time and the trouble to do it, it it's going to be undernourished. It's going to shrivel up. It, it's going to shrivel up and die. And so how do we how do we how do we do this? How, you know, how do we nourish our spirit? Well, we do it through the purposes that God has for you. Uh, think about you know how. You know there are purposes that God had. God, uh, God's purpose for us is is to worship with Him every day. I think sometimes we think, okay, I've got to worship God. Well, I go to church on Sunday and I'm I'm worshiping God on Sunday. Well, yes, it's very important for us to uh, be together. We've talked about fellowship. We talked about those relationships and some of the others. But uh, you know if our um, if our lifestyle is not where we're fellowshipping and, and building relationships with the brothers and sisters of Christ, we're going to struggle. And so we need times of worship, though, every day where we get to know God, where we worship Him privately. Uh, if we're not doing that, we're going to have an undernourished spirit. Yes, we need times of collective worship, and that's essential for building relationships and growing and, and all that we need. Uh, and, and that's actually the second thing. But this first point I want to make is... The way that we nourish our spirit is we worship. We, we never neglect. Every day we have every reason to, to worship Him. And so, you know, how do we do it? That's one thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. This, the, the second thing is just what I had mentioned. You need fellowship with other believers. You know, if you've got difficulties in your life and challenges and struggles, and if you're having a hard time, but you isolate yourself, you know, we're in a time right now where... We're doing a lot of. We're still doing, as we did last year, a lot of virtual uh, services and lessons and things like that. I'm again thankful that we can do that. <coughs> Something is in my throat. <laughs> I'm thankful that we can do that. But what concerns me is is we're missing that fellowship with other believers. That is essential in our growth and in maintaining our passion. Isolation is horrible if it continues on for a long period of time. Where do they put prisoners who have been bad? They put them in isolation to punish them. Uh, and so, you know, you think about, we don't want to remain this way. Let's, let's not allow the fears of, of, of things going around us. Let's have a little f- faith and trust in God to take care of us. You know, let's, let's be together as we can. Again, we understand some who struggle and can't. But, you know, let's not make excuses, I guess is what we're saying, if we, if we could be able to do that but we need that fellowship we need one another that's why the church is so essential we need one another we need that edification we need that mutual edification that building up of one another that encouragement from one another uh, we need that constantly and and not just one day a week not just twice a week we need that every day too you know as the church we're together always we are to build one another look at the early church and look how they took care of one another daily that's what we are to be doing that's part of that fellowship but you also need to be reading God's Word. Grow to be more like Christ. That's how you grow to be more like Christ. You study uh, God's Word. You see what God wants for your life. You understand what God wants for all of us. You, you realize how we're to become more like Jesus. And that's the way we do it. But you also need a ministry. You need a ministry where your uh, talents, again, an unused talents is a passion killer. So we need a ministry where we're using our talents to help other people. Whatever your talent ability is, you might think it's small, but in other people's eyes and what other people might need, it's probably great. It's probably something that they absolutely will be blessed by and benefit by. So, you know, do all these things. But also you need a mission. You need a mission in the world where you're sharing your faith. I'm not talking about going overseas or having to do that. But you need a mission in your life where you're sharing your faith. If you're not sharing, you're not caring. And you are to be sharing your faith with others. You're to be telling other people about Jesus. It's not the preacher's sole responsibility. It's not the elder's sole responsibility. Certainly they will be doing that as well. It's it's not a missionary's responsibility, though that's what they uh, have elected and chosen to, to follow and pursue and do, and they love to do that. We all have this responsibility of sharing our faith. And if you're not doing that, guess what? Your heart is going to shrivel up. You are going to lose your passion, and you're not going. We all have every reason. Now, it may take us getting out of a comfort zone. It may take us uh, you know, uh, doing some things that are hard sometimes. But guess what? Being a Christian is hard. It's not easy. Uh, if we're passionate for God, we're going, to, we're going to face these obstacles, and we're going to bust right through. We're not going to allow them to stop us. We're going to continue to move forward in our growth. So 
Now, if you think about these things that we just mentioned, if you choose one of those purposes and forget all the others, then you're going to be unbalanced. You're going to lose your passion. You need all of those things. You need private worship. You need fellowship with your, uh, with with other believers. You need corporate worship. You need to read and uh, study God's Word in order to grow closer and more, more like Jesus. You need to have a ministry where you're using your talents, and you need to have a mission where you're sharing your faith. All of these things culminate, come together in in us um, stoking the fire uh, in our passion for for the Lord. So. So how do I do it? All that sounds great. All that sounds, you know, really good. How do I plug in to God? How do I how do I have this living, vital, daily relationship with God that keeps my spirit nourished? Well, the starting point is to remember how God feels about you. You know, we talked this morning how Moses was reminding the people as they were about to enter into the promised land, he wanted to remind them in order to, to give them some encouragement because they were facing some, some hard stuff, some difficulties. It wasn't going to be easy. Uh, There's certainly those who were pitted against saying, hey, you can't do this. This is not, you know, it's impossible. But Moses was encouraging them and reminding them of their history and reminding them what God had done for them. And one of the things is he, he told them that you're loved. And so the starting point for us is the same, is to remember how God feels about you. Remember that God loves you. You know, uh, we know it, but maybe it is we forget it. I don't, I don't know, or we just ignore it. But God is hopelessly in love with you. Exodus 31 verse 14 says, You must worship only the Lord, for He is a God who is passionate about His relationship with you. Think about that. The God of heaven is passionate about his relationship with me. The God of heaven is is passionate. He loves me that much. Yes, he does. God is passionate about you. He made you to love you. You were created as an object of his love. And the more you understand how God is passionate about you, the more passionate you're going to get about God. We can't forget these things. You know, how do we know God is passionate about you? The proof is at the cross. Jesus stretched out his hands and they nailed him to the cross. And he was in essence saying, I, I'd rather die than, than live without you. That's, that's how passionate I, I'm to be about the one who made me. That's how passionate I'm to be about God. God, I, I love you, and, and I would rather die than live without you. You know, in fact, the, the suffering of Jesus on the cross is often referred to as the passion of Christ. His passion is, is real. Jesus never wanted us to forget what he did on the cross, so he gave us the symbol of, of communion. He said, when you, when you take communion, I, I want you to remember my passion. I want you to remember how passionate I am about you. You see, if, if, if we're not careful, we can allow certain things to, to hinder our passion for God. And certainly an undernourished spirit, it will absolutely kill our passion if we're not careful. C.S. Lewis said, um, said it like this. He said, the only thing Christianity cannot be... Now listen to this. He said, the only thing Christianity cannot be is moderately important. Think about that. Moderately important. If, if Jesus is God and He died and, and loved you that much, then you owe Him the rest of your life, every spare minute. If He didn't, then go home and, and, and live a self-centered life. <laughs> do what you want to do. The only thing Christianity cannot be is moderately important in your life. It deserves your entire life. It, it, it deserves everything from you. It doesn't just deserve, you know, one time a week of coming to a church building and, and singing some songs and taking the Lord's Supper and listening to a lesson and, and praying and, and giving and, and then leaving. Our passion for God is so much more than that. That's going to be essential, a part of it. It's, it's going to be we want to be together with our, our, our church family. We want to worship God collectively. We want to tell God how much we love Him. But it's going to be more in our life. Christianity can't be moderately important to us. So I guess the question 
through all that we've studied the last few weeks is how are you in your passion for God? Are you, are you lukewarm? Are you just going through the motions? Or are you red hot for God because He loves you that much? And you, you know, you, you've seen, you look at the cross off and you think about what Jesus has done. Has, has there ever been a, a time in your life when you were closer to God than you are right now? The truth is, you're as close to God as you choose to be. You, you, can, you can have as much of God as you want. You, you can be as passionate about God as you want. And if you're not passionate, it's your fault. It's my fault. Because we allow these passion killers to get in the way. We ignore what God has done for us. We ignore who He is. And I just don't want us to do that if that's what we're doing. I don't want anyone to do that. Because if you look at the cross, it simply says, I love you. And if we look and examine our lives in light of the cross, what do our lives say in return? Let's be passionate about God. Let's pray. Dear Holy Father, we are so thankful for this time of study and this series of lessons that we've looked at here on Sunday nights and in our Sunday night thoughts. And I pray that we will not allow these things to hinder us in our relationship with you, Lord, anymore if that's what's happening. If there's anything else that's hindering us in our relationship of growing closer and being passionate about you, Lord, help us not to go through the motions, but help us to give all to you, to, to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind. Help us to, to help others see because we know that life is short. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. And our lives are to be spent uh, sharing the gospel with other people and letting other people see Jesus in our life. Lord, help us to make sure we're doing that with our own families and, and, and spreading that to others that we work with and that we go to school with. And Lord, help us to, to be be on fire for you because you paid the ultimate sacrifice for us. Help us not to take that lightly, Lord, but give us the strength and give us the courage to move forward and to be strong and to always remember who you are. Help us never have an undernourished spirit, but to always strive to grow closer to you in every way. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. I thank you for your time. I thank you for joining us in this series of lessons. And, and, and I hope you'll be blessed. I hope you will be a blessing to others as you are passionate about God. Because remember, He is passionate about you. May God bless you. Have a good night.